I think uh, Mr. Moss has the floor next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'd like to return to Mr. Champagne and uh, uh, Madam Ng. Mr. Ng, um, and it's not about auto, so it's okay. We're done with that. Uh, I, I'm just as passionate with supply chains, but uh, uh, at any rate, and you may not have an, a full answer on this right now, but I want to raise an issue and see what your response is in terms of where we can go. And this is with regards to freight containers, um, inflationary prices. Um, before COVID, um, it was approximately for a lot of retail and supply chain around 25% of the cost of um, getting freight containers from overseas. Uh, and that's gone up to um, 198%. Uh, and also Canadians are being charged around 30% um, higher than American counterparts for uh, steamship um, uh, coverage is what I'm being told. Uh, can you provide some insight in terms of what the government is doing? Has it been raised as an issue? And, and how do we support, especially medium and small businesses that are getting pounded by this uh, increased uh, cost, which was gonna be inflationary to uh, consumers and also disrupt uh, supply chains? Yeah, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Massey, for that. Um, it is an issue that we are very, very seized with because the cost of doing business, uh, in particular for our small and mediums who have less flexibility to deal with this, um, is something that uh, that we are very much working on. You may know that Minister El Gabra convened um, a supply chain roundtable where Minister Champagne and I were both on, working specifically with industry and across the system that actually will deal with transportation industry as well as SMEs and uh, and, and labor as well. I mean, so there's, uh, and, and so we're very much working on that. And, uh, and, and if you sort of have, you know, if you're talking to, uh, you know, uh, workers representatives or, you know, or, 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 or industries in your, you know, I mean, that, you know, that you talk to, feel free to share those ideas with us because we're very, very much um, working on solutions um, as we speak. And, and with that, is there um, uh, is there any work done with you guys, the, the steamship industry itself, um, in terms of, uh, I don't know if there's, I, I've had some raised collusion or, uh, or I guess not price matching, but those types of issues, maybe collusion might be too hard. It's not, um, but lack of competition, uh, though, and, and also in aging fleets um, and preferential treatment to other countries. So these are just the things that I'm hearing right now. Just wanted to hear from that. Well, um, I appreciate that, uh, uh, Mr. Massey, and I would say uh, you may have seen I seized uh, or I directed the Competition Bureau to be on the watch with respect to the gas, uh, the price of gas, the price at the pump recently. Uh, we know that it's largely influenced by global markets, but we want to make sure we put extra attention uh, at this stage. If, if you have any uh, insight on that or any uh, instance that you see, I'm quite happy to seize the Competition Bureau and to make sure that we put extra watch on this thing, because I agree with you, uh, we need to use every tool in the toolbox to make sure that life is affordable for Canadians. And, and I intend to use all the tools that we have in the toolbox. There was actually a price monitoring commission in place, but it was defunded under the Harper government, but it was put in place by Paul Martin. I have two motions on that. So I'll forward that information and thank you very much for your time. Appreciate for your leadership. Thank you, uh, MP Moss. Uh, je passerai maintenant la parole à 